Hello. Today, let's talk about a specific variety of critical reasoning questions, which is called weakening the argument questions. If we have a faint idea about what critical reasoning questions are, there's a paragraph which could have a couple of arguments, generally one argument, but then there is a premise, there's an additional premise, a counter premise leading to a conclusion and this kind of a paragraph is something forms the crux or the main argument of the passage. When we look at this argument, strong chances that in questions like which of the following would weaken the argument, the author would have left a loophole which needs to be capitalized on. The paper setter generally would be crafting the argument in such a manner that at least one more premise or a counter premise would be essential to reaching the answer. Weakening the argument is more about finding that option that helps us go against the conclusion. The questions could sound like these, which of the following, if true, most seriously weakens the argument? Which of the following, if true, casts the most doubt on the conclusion drawn above? Which of the following, if true, is most damaging to the conclusion above? Which of the following, if known, is evidence that contradicts the hypothesis above? All of them indicated just one thing. Keep the conclusion in mind. Keep the premise in mind. Think about one point that makes you go against the conclusion and helps you establish a strong footing in going against the conclusion drawn by the author. Let's take an example. Carl is clearly an incompetent detective. Look at the strong statement for a start. This is a conclusion made by the author. Carl is clearly an incompetent detective. He solved a smaller percentage of the cases assigned to him in the last three years. Only one out of 25. He's solved a smaller percentage of cases assigned to him than any other detective on the police force. Which of the following, if true, most seriously weakens the argument above? The options when we look at it, if you look at the option E, many of the officers in the police department in which Carl serves were hired or promoted within the last five years. How much, does, how much do we really care about this particular point when we talk about whether Carl was competitive or not? A stupid option doesn't make sense. If we talk about option D, Carl was previously a detective in a police department in another city and in the four years he spent, he solved only one out of 30 crimes. If he solved one out of 30 then and now he solved one out of 25, he's clearly incompetent. We don't know. Are we able to take that shot? Say for example, if I end up saying that in some really difficult scenarios, I could crack 1 out of 30 questions in CAT. Last year, I cracked 1 out of 40. Therefore, I am incompetent. The word that I used carefully was that in difficult scenarios, I cannot generalize. If I look at the option C, detectives on the police force on which Carl serves are provided with extensive resources, including the use of a large computer database to help them solve crimes. This one is going against, probably this will go against the question asked itself. I'm telling you that every kind of help that I'm making and you're able to still, still solve one out of 25 and I'm telling you, you're incompetent. I don't know if I'm filling up all the gaps that are there in the argument. Other two options, option B is a funny option. Before he became a detective, Carl was a neighborhood police officer and was highly respected by the residents. How much do we care if you're respected until you're able to solve? And your decision about competent or incompetent comes out of the cases that you solve, not out of the respect that you earn. Again, a grey option, rejected. The first one, because the police chief regards Carl as the most capable, she assigns him only the most difficult cases, ones that others have failed to solve. Categorically, the answer. C. The fourth that is given is that 1 out of 25 is what he solves. And we are saying he's incompetent. 
now the author wants us to go against that statement of incompetence so we have to prove that he is competent if we have to prove that he is competent the first option tells us that the most difficult cases probably the ones which others are not able to solve reaches him that makes him competent because the difficult cases which reach him he is still able to solve 1 out of 25 that is an example of weakening the argument if you look at another example a very niche kind of an example wherein a statement by the beverage company representative is made the statement the plastic rings that hold six pack of beverage cans together pose a threat to wild animals which often become entangled in the discarded rings and suffocate as a result following our lead all beverage companies will soon use only those rings consisting of a new plastic that disintegrates after only three days exposure to sunlight once we all complete the switch over from the old to new therefore the threat of suffocation that plastic rings pose to wild animals will be eliminated we look at it carefully he is saying that these rings will suffocate animals to death and then look at the argument is that once we replace the rings the problem will be eliminated does make slight sense very superficial though but what are we supposed to find out we need to find out which one of the arguments seriously weakens the argument let's think through before looking at the options generally weakening questions can be solved even without looking at the options if for example I tell you that there are so many bombs lying in the area and each one of them has a lot of destruction capability from tomorrow onwards we will not put any bombs therefore the world is safe your argument will be what happened to the bombs that were put yesterday day before and till now if such obvious is the argument here just because it is specific or niche to a beverage company we might not be as comfortable though we are still able to reach out to an answer that says what happens to the ones which were already lying in this place now look at the options first one the switch over to the new plastic rings will take at least two more years does that mean the problem will get eliminated or not the main question is not being answered first one is rejected second one after the beverage companies have switched over a substantial number of the old plastic rings will persist in most aquatic and woodland environments specific to what we were thinking about what if we are switching the newer ones the older ones still persist therefore this is weakening the argument I'll go with B too premature to select an answer we look at the other options before we conclude C says the new plastic rings are slightly less expensive we don't care about the expense C is out D the new plastic rings rarely disintegrate this is actually going against the data itself we should not even think about reading beyond this is out E the new plastic rings disintegrate into substances that are harmful to aquatic animals when ingested in substantial quantities if these are harmful still the problem is that it is not getting eliminated so we are still not finding a grounding for going against the argument or weakening the argument so the answer now we are sure that is the option B when questions like weakening the argument come up the first thing that you do evaluate the argument before going to the options you will somewhere faintly get an idea as to what would the correct answer be like and then go in search of the right option this might still not be a foolproof one for 100% of the questions but I can nearly vouch for 80-85% of the questions getting solved by this kind of a method or an approach happy reading